Alhamdulillah, wa sharu in la ilaha illallah, wa tahu la sharika la. We praise God and bear witness, there is no other God beside God. He is one and has no partners. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Inshallah. Praise God. Looks like we have some room over here. That never happens. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, we're missing some people today. Oh, uh, a couple of announcements. We have charity on Sunday at 2, inshallah. And then Payam said that um, um, we're a little short on the conference fee of $600 if someone wants to donate, see Payam. And if you're wondering why, he can explain it. I'm not going to go through it all. <coughs> so, donation, opportunity to strive, inshallah. Um, I guess that's it. Okay. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So my sermons on uh, steadfastly persevering. Um, you know, I don't want to give the definitions. It's basically steadfastly persevering means don't give up, right? Don't give up. Um, and I found that it's mentioned in the Quran over 50 times. <clears throat> so it shows you how important it is that God is stressing to steadfastly persevere so many times. Um, you know, uh, Arash's recent sermon was a, a good example of steadfastly persevering and seeking God's kingdom and experiencing God's support along uh, their journey. So, you know, it was... A good example of steadfastly persevering. A lot to go through. But, um, you know, that's just one, one aspect that they went through. But they were seeking God's kingdom first. And God was helping them through um, the difficulties and the um, um, journey that they had to go through. So I want to start um, with, I, you guys have probably heard this, but... It's good to reflect on. It's the parable of the sower from, from the New Testament of the Bible. It's in Luke. So it said, uh, When a large crowd had gathered and people had come to Jesus from every city, he used this parable as an illustration. A farmer went to plant his seeds. Some seeds were planted along the road, were trampled, and were devoured by birds. Others were planted on rocky soil. When the plants came up, they withered because they had no moisture. Others were planted among thorn bushes. The thorn bushes grew up with them and choked them. Others were planted on good ground. When they came up, they produced a hundred times as much as was planted. After he had said this, he called out, let the person who has ears listen. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. Jesus answered, Knowledge about the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been given directly to you, but it is given to others in parables. When they look, they don't see, and when they hear, they don't understand. That's interesting. When I read that, I was thinking of Surah 7, 179. Satan hypnotizes his constituents. It says, We have committed to hell multitudes of jinns and humans, they have minds with which they do not understand, eyes with which they do not see, and ears with which they do not hear. They are like animals. No, they are far worse. They are totally unaware. So what this parable illustrates is the seed is God's word. Some people are like seeds that were planted along the road. They hear the word, but then the devil comes. He takes the word away from them. So they don't believe, and they don't, uh, they're not saved. Some people are like seeds on rocky soil. They welcome the word with joy whenever they hear it, but they don't develop any roots. They believe for a while, but then their faith is tested. They abandon it. The seeds that were planted among thorn bushes are people who hear the word, but as life goes on, the worries Riches and pleasures of life choke them, so they don't produce anything good. And lastly, the seeds that were planted on good ground are people who also hear the word, uh, but they keep it in their good and honest hearts, 
and produce what is good despite what life may bring. So this parable helps, parable helps us understand the pitfalls and the traps that keep most people from steadfastly persevering in God's path. And each of these are clearly taught to us in the Quran as well. So as far as the devil coming and taking away the word, in Surah 4, verse 118, he says, God has condemned him. He said, I will surely recruit a definite share of your worshipers. And the footnote says, the majority of believers in God fall into idolatry. I will mislead them. I will entice them. I will command them to forbid the eating of certain meats by marking the ears of livestock. livestock. And I will command them to distort the creation of God. Anyone who accepts the devil as a Lord instead of God has incurred a profound loss. He promises them and entices them. What the devil promises is no more than an illusion. These have incurred hell as their final abode and can never evade it. And then secondly, when it talks about um, having no roots and when their faith is tested, they abandon it. So of course, um, in Surah 29, the test is mandatory. Do the people think that they'll be left to say we believe without being put to the test? We have tested those before them, for God must distinguish those who are truthful, and he must expose the liars. And in Surah 47, we will certainly put you to the test in order to distinguish those among you who strive and steadfastly persevere. We must expose your true qualities. So when the people are tested, a lot of people, they abandon it. They say, oh, it's just too, too much, too difficult. And then when the seeds are planted among thorn bushes, okay, and it says the worries, riches, and pleasures of life choke them. This is talked about in Surah 57, verse 20, preoccupation with this life condemned. Know that this worldly life is no more than play and games and boasting among you and hoarding of money and children. It is like abundant rain that produces plants and pleases the disbelievers. But then the plants turn into useless hay and are blown away by the wind. In the hereafter, there's either severe retribution or forgiveness from God and approval. This worldly life is no more than a temporary illusion. And lastly, for those who accept the word and produce good deeds. Surah 22 says, give good news to the obedient. They are the ones whose hearts tremble upon mentioning God. They steadfastly persevere during adversity. They observe the contact prayer salat, and from our provisions to them, they give to charity. Surah 7, verse 58, it says, the good land readily produces its plants by the leave of its Lord, while the bad land barely produces anything useful. We thus explain the revelations for people who are appreciative. So, we know it's um, from this information, from the verses that we read, we see that steadfastly persevering is very important. We see how many people fall off the path for various reasons. <clears throat> Only the minority of the minority will be saved. And that's why God continuously commands us throughout the Quran to steadfastly persevere. Because if we do not, we will become the worst losers. You know, it's, um, I want to read Surah 3, verse 200. It says, O oh, you who believe, you shall be steadfast, you shall persevere, you shall be united, you shall observe God that you may succeed. So you hear all these shells, right? This isn't just like, well, yeah, I'll try my best. No, it's a command from God. God commands us to persevere, to be steadfast. Because if not, here's the alternative. Surah 57, 13, and 14, the worst losers on that day, the hypocrite men and women will say to those who believed, please allow us to absorb some of your light. It will be said, go back behind you and seek light. A barrier will be set up between them 
whose gate separates mercy on the inner side from retribution on the outer side. They will call upon them, were we not with you? They will answer, yes, but you cheated your souls, hesitated, doubted, and became misled by wishful thinking until God's judgment came. You are diverted from God by illusions. Submission is our life, and we must steadfastly persevere to the end. As submitters, we understand that this fleeting life is just an illusion, and that our focus must always be on the real life, the hereafter. And the only way we're going to make it is to steadfastly persevere. 52.48 says, You shall steadfastly persevere in carrying out your Lord's command. You are in our eyes and praise and glorify your Lord when you get up. Eleven one fifteen. You shall steadfastly persevere, for God never fails to recompense the righteous. As for those who steadfastly persevere and lead a righteous life, they deserve forgiveness and a generous recompense. Oh, my people, this, is, this first life is a temporary illusion, while the hereafter is the eternal abode. So let's stop there. Tubu Elelah, let's repent. We praise God and bear witness. There is no other God beside God. He is one and has no partners. You know, God is so merciful that he tells us, you know, what we have to do, how to do it, and he gives us so many examples of the believers uh, in the Quran who steadfastly persevered and were granted victory. You know, Abraham delivered the message to his people, and he was ridiculed, threatened, and ultimately thrown in the fire. But God saved him from the fire and granted him victory. And we have the story of Moses. I'm going to read some verses about the story of Moses. The leaders among Pharaoh's people said, Will you allow Moses and his people to corrupt the earth and forsake you and your gods? He said, we will kill their sons and spare their daughters. We are much more powerful than they are. Moses said to his people, seek God's help and steadfastly persevere. The earth, this is interesting, the earth belongs to God and he grants it to whomever he chooses from among his servants. The ultimate victory belongs to the righteous. And this is in Surah 26. They pursued them towards the east when both parties saw each other, Moses' people said, we will be caught. He said, no way, my Lord is with me, he will guide me. We then inspired Moses, strike the sea with your staff, whereupon it parted. Each part was like a great hill. We then delivered them all. We thus saved Moses and all those who were with him, and we drowned the others. This should be a sufficient proof, but most people are not believers. Most assuredly, your Lord is the Almighty, most merciful. We see um, the next example is Joseph. You know, Joseph learned from his dream that he was destined for a bright future. But he had to face a lot of adversity. And he steadfastly persevered. God, God granted him prominence, victory, and happiness. You know, this is um, probably one of, I mean, it's a great example. I mean, you know, how many years Joseph had to step fast, he persevere. He knew at the end that he was destined for a bright future, but how long is it going to take, right? This is where steadfast, he persevering comes in. I mean, years and years and years, right? But this is our life. We want to do it. And we read about Saul and David and the believers, David and Goliath, 2 to 49. When Saul took command of the troops, 
He said, God is putting you to the test by means of a stream. Anyone who drinks from it does, long, do not, does not belong with me. Only those who do not taste it belong with me, unless it is just a single sip. They drank from it, except a few of them. When he crossed it with those who believed, they said, Now we lack the strength to face Goliath and his troops. Those who were conscious of meeting God said, Many a small army defeated a large army, army by God's leave. God is with those who steadfastly persevere. When they faced Goliath and his troops, they prayed, Our Lord grants us steadfastness, strengthen our foothold, and support us against the disbelieving people. They defeated them by God's leave, and David killed Goliath. God gave him kingship and wisdom and taught him as he willed. If it were not for God's support of some people against others, there would be chaos on earth. But God showers his grace upon the people. So you see all these examples, they never gave up, right? They said, no, God is going to grant us victory. I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't care how bad it seems, you know, or how the odds are stacked against us. I mean, this is in every situation, right? It doesn't matter. God is in control. And God promises this victory for the righteous. And that's in everything that we do, Okay. It's not just in, I, I don't see it in just, um, um, you know, our religion, but in every aspect of our life, God grants us, you know, victory, and he plans for the believers, and, and it's a good plan. Just ask Bushra and Payam. MashaAllah. 634, messengers before you have been rejected, and they steadfastly persevered in the face of rejection. They were persecuted until our victory came to them. Such is God's system that will never change. The history of my messengers thus sets, sets the precedence for you. 14.12 says, Why should we not trust in God when he has guided us in our paths? We will steadfastly persevere in the face of your persecution. In God, all the trusters shall trust. And I want to read a, a, a little bit more verses from the Bible. This is um, testing of your faith. It says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. It's interesting, listen to this. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts, hypocrite, is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is an indecisive man, unstable in all his ways. A brother of humble means should rejoice in his having been exalted, and a rich person in his having been humbled, because he will fade away like a wildflower. For the sun comes up with its scorching heat and dries up the grass. The flower in it drops off and its beauty is gone. That is how the rich person will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. We can see a lot of uh, chronic, of course it's from the scripture, but a lot of chronic... Um, um, What's the word? 
similarities, yeah, um, in the Bible. And it's, it's interesting, when I first became a submitter, I was constantly going back and forth writing Quranic verses in the Bible and, and Bible verses in the Quran. So, because I was just, you know, so fascinated that you know, there's so many of these um, uh, similarities in the Quran that, um, you know, talks about, um, you know, sin, right? If we don't seek refuge in God from Satan rejected, that thought that comes into our mind, okay, it becomes, you know, we are tempted by it. And from pretty soon we start taking action. And when that, when that, when Satan has this, you know, then guess what? That's when he's won and he's taken us away from God's path. Inshallah, that doesn't happen to us. The inevitable test. You will certainly be tested through your money and your lives. And you will hear from those who receive the scripture and from the idol worshippers a lot of insult. If you steadfastly persevere and lead a righteous life, this will prove the strength of your faith. And this is talking about after passing the admission tests, the proven worshippers of God alone enjoy a perfect life now and forever. And here's another few verses from the Bible. Don't be fooled, you cannot outsmart God. A man gathers a crop from what he plants. Some people plant to please their desires controlled by sin. From these desires they will harvest death. Others plant to please the spirit. From the spirit they will harvest eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap. If we do not give up. Interesting, it gives those words. If we do not give up. So when we can do good to everyone, let us do it. Let's try even harder to do good to the family of believers. You know, also as parents, it's not everybody a parent here, but uh, we must steadfastly persevere in enjoying our family to follow God's commands. Parents' responsibility in 2132. You shall enjoin your family to observe the contact prayer salat and steadfastly persevere in doing so. We do not ask you for any provisions. We are the ones who provide for you. The ultimate triumph belongs to the righteous. So, in conclusion, what happens and what can we expect when we steadfastly persevere in doing all that God commands us to do? Because God tells us to do it. But what can we expect from that? Our souls grow and we became, become able to control our bodies, overcoming temptations and our weaknesses. These are just a few that I wrote down. We get to know God, who God is, and all his attributes. Steadfastly persevering. We see God's support when we steadfastly persevere. We see the victory that God promises to the believers when we steadfastly persevere. We see our confidence in God grow, right? We see that God answers our prayers over and over and over again. We see that God makes everything easy for us. We see our understanding of God's scripture and God's systems grow. And we see God's forgiveness over and over again as we become purified, strong, and certain. And I'm sure there's, you know, a plethora of, of other things that, that happen. But for the most part, and ultimately, you know, God grants his victory and redemption to God's kingdom if we steadfastly persevere and never give up. MashaAllah, as I said, God has given us all the answers to achieve success. What to do, how to do it, and examples of his prophets and messengers. And then if that's not enough, even examples among ourselves, right? I was talking about Adesh and, you know, all the sermons that we hear, all the, all the personal sharings that we hear, you know? These are all um, success that we see by persevering, steadfastly persevering. O you who believe, seek help through steadfastness and the contact prayer salat 
God is with those who steadfastly persevere. And this is uh, just a couple more verses. This is another one from, from the Bible. This is in Psalms. It says, Blessed is the person who fears the Lord and is happy to obey his commands. His descendants will grow strong on the earth. The family of a good person will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his home. His righteousness continues forever. Light will shine in the dark for a good person. He is merciful, compassionate, and fair. All goes well for the person who is generous and lends willingly. He earns an honest living. He will never fail. A righteous person will always be remembered. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart remains secure, full of confidence in the Lord. His heart is steady, and he is not afraid. In the end, he will look triumphantly at his enemies. He gives freely to poor people. His righteousness continues forever. His head is raised in honor. The wicked person sees this and becomes angry. His, he angrily grits his teeth and disappears. The hope that the wicked people have will vanish. So, last couple of verses. Believers versus disbelievers. The believers. Is one who recognizes that your Lord's revelations to you are the truth equal to one who is blind? Only those who possess intelligence will take heed. They are the ones who fulfill their pledge to God and do not violate the covenant. They join what God has commanded to be joined, reverence their Lord, and fear the dreadful reckoning. They steadfastly persevere in seeking their Lord. Observing, observe the contact prayer of Salat, spend from our provisions to them secretly and publicly, and counter evil with good. These have deserved the best abode. They enter the gardens of Eden together with the righteous among their parents, their spouses, and their children. They enter, the angels will enter into them from every door. Listen to this. Peace be upon you because you steadfastly persevered. What a joyous destiny. MashaAllah. Fakim as Allah. Thank you. Tend to complete the Friday inshallah prayer. Allah Haikba. Bismillah Rahman al Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman al Rahim. Maliki al Madin. Yakan al Badu. Wa Yakan al Stain. Itana Sarat al Mustaqim. Sarat al Adin al Amtalehem. Gail al Maktub alayhem al Adalim. Allah Haikba. Allah <laughs> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawmuddin, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ittana Sirat Al-Mustaqim, Sirat Al-Adeen Al-Amta Alayhim, Gail Al-Maktub Alayhim Ala Dalim, Allah Haqba. Allah Haqba. Allah Haikba, Allah Haikba, Allah Haikba, Allah Haikba, Allah Haikba,